Planets are pretty important. They house all your pops, generate most of your major resources, and can be your last line of defense against invaders. But how exactly do you take care of them to get the most value in your game? Well, first of all, you watch this video to find out. Now, before you go building anything on planets, first, you have to colonize one. And this isn't quite as simple as it sounds. First of all, you need to make sure that your target planet is habitable enough for the species in your empire. For example, the default humans obviously have improved habitability on Earth-like planets, but something like Mars or a barren world is a no-go. Every other species in the game will have a set of preferences, so just make sure you're picking planets that meet yours. Of course, getting other species in your empire will mean you can make the most of more planets, so if that's an option, then you go right ahead. Once you've found a planet and own the system that it's inside of, you can either build a colonization ship directly in a shipyard and manually move it to the planet, or you can do everything from the expansion planner menu, which is what I would recommend doing since it's so much simpler and keeps things super easy. When doing either of these, you can select the species you want sent over, but over time through migration, others can also make their homes there. A short while after the ship reaches its target planet, it will finish colonization and be ready to be managed with buildings, districts, and more. On planets, these are the two things you can build, and each are used for different things. Districts are the most straightforward and generally increase the amount of housing and jobs on the planet, specializing in a certain sector. Industrial focuses on consumer goods and alloys, Generator focuses on energy, Mining focuses on minerals, and Agriculture focuses on food. City districts create trade value and amenities, as well as increasing the building slots on the planet, so are worth building a few of these pretty much everywhere. The other four can be built equally to maintain the balance, or focus on just one to specialize in a certain resource, and it all really depends on the planet and what your empire needs at the time. Your capacity for districts varies for each type from planet to planet, and some extra capacity can be unlocked by removing blockers, which are natural features that you must spend energy to remove. Buildings are the other things you can build on planets, and these are a lot more varied. You can make something to do pretty much anything, like produce main resources, as well as rare materials like crystals and gases, increase your housing, decrease crime, and pretty much anything else to do with keeping your planet moving. Again, you can build whatever you want on any planet, but normally it's best to specialize to make the most of any modifiers on that planet, both natural and artificial. Speaking of which, designations. This is basically you deciding what the planet's main focus is going to be. Don't worry, it doesn't stop you from being able to build anything. All it does is grant bonuses to specific buildings and workers in those buildings. Also, quick side note, yeah, I haven't touched on the population tab because it takes like five seconds to explain and can pretty much be ignored 99% of the time. It shows all the different jobs on planets and you can click on a type to prioritize that job being filled before others. If you leave it alone, most of the time, it'll fill up equally over time anyway. Back to designations. There are a massive number to choose from, focusing on the different areas of production, similar to districts, but also some that focus on creating rare materials, research, unity, and even military strongholds. You should absolutely pick one of these for every single planet. Do not leave it on auto, since it's a little bit wonky, and leaving it on auto basically means it doesn't do anything, so you're missing out on a bunch of massive buffs. Even if you aren't specializing in your planets, look at what the planet is doing the most of, and boost that for some free bonuses. These also work alongside automation, which has got some pretty huge changes kind of recently, that I actually covered in a video done for the devs, so I hope they don't sue me for going over this again. It's pretty damn simple these days. All you do is click on the planet automation button, and once it's orange, it's automated, and we'll begin building that planet based on your selected designation. If you don't pick one, it's going to do some weird and less helpful stuff, so just pick something. After this is done, you go to the planets and sectors menu and make sure you have resources going into the shared stockpile. This is basically the funds that are used to build on automated planets, so making sure you have a steady supply going into this, either by monthly deposits or manual lump sums, is essential. Sectors have settings of their own, but just leave them off as it confuses the computer and can actually make things worse. Finally, you can also assign governors to look after sectors, and they'll bring their own sets of unique bonuses that will do nothing but help your planets. So once you have a few planets in the sector, get one appointed ASAP. Bonus tip, always get planets in sectors if you can for this very reason. If a planet isn't in one, you can create one by clicking on this icon here and try to do this on a planet that's in the middle of a few others to get the most you can in the same sector. Whether you're relying on automation or doing everything manually, you need to make sure planets stay under your control and the root of that is keeping them at high stability. You can keep this high by providing plenty of jobs, housing and amenities, as well as keeping crime low. Having a high stability will net you more resources from jobs, extra trade value, and more pop growth from immigration. As long as you keep stability high, you can't really go wrong, and planets will stay loyal to you without any real issues. And finally, we should probably go over armies and invasions. I'm not going to spend much time here since it's pretty damn straightforward. Every planet has a defensive army that stays on the planet at all times. Additional units can be recruited and either left on the planet as defensive armies, or embark to travel through space and attempt to invade enemy planets. Just make sure that your army has more power than the one on the planet you're invading, and you should be just fine, give or take some devastation from collateral damage. But that'll clear up before you know it. And finally, if you're wondering why my planet UI looks so damn good, then check out this video here to see the very best quality of life mods in Stellaris.